We're going to hear from from Jins Cadwood from AgriDigital about how fintech is changing up um, one of Australia's more traditional industries, um, which is the agriculture and supply chain fin financing industry. So welcome, Jins. Uh, firstly, uh, anyone heard of AgriDigital? Put your hand up. Sweet. I've got some people here. Nice. Obviously, um, another person there. Sweet. So, this is going to probably be a lot of new stuff for a lot of people here. Um, if you haven't heard of AgriDigital, what I want to give you is a journey through what we are doing and how we actually play in the finance and fintech space. Um, traditionally, you won't think of an agriculture company playing in that space, but um, I'm here to change your opinions and views. So let me set some context first. If you think about agriculture and the supply chain globally, there's a lot of issues. Uh, we have food insecurity, we have embedded risk, we have fragile supply chains because of a whole raft of reasons, huge issue transparency, banks do not want to provide assistance other than traditional financing options, and really when it comes down to a supply chain platform perspective, there's only a few players left in the world. So, Traditional farmers and smaller players are already moved out. As a result, food insecurities, there's a huge, huge problem. We need to grow food and food production by 70% just to meet global demand by 2025. Um, so we're already running out of food and we're running out of ways to produce food. A third of the, the food that we do produce is wasted. So there's another huge problem in the supply chain. And as you, as you may or may not know, there's a huge problem from the farming and agriculture sector where global emissions is actually 25% um, as a contribution rate. From, from a farmer's perspective, they don't have a huge direct farmer model that actually makes it easy for global food demand to be met. Most farmers are actually taken out of, the, the, out of the supply chain equation and automatically do not have the incentive to continue. Right now, for example, in Western Australia, the, f the cost of doing business from a small farming perspective has gone up tenfold. So a small, farming, a, a small family farm can no longer operate. And as a result, there's been a lot of acquisitions. Recently, COVID-19 has actually shown the huge logistical problems in the supply chain, trying to move any, site, any type of food from one place to another globally has just been completely disrupted. From a business perspective, 4% of the entire agribusiness economy is actually controlling the 90% of the trade. 4%. So all the smaller people automatically get taken out. From a data perspective, it's scattered. There's not one single place in the entire world where you can get end-to-end -end data for anywhere across that supply chain. As a result, lack of transparency, lack of access to data, every year, $40 billion occurs in food fraud, 40 billion. So what does that mean? Well, imagine if you were a farmer or anyone on the supply chain trying to access capital. You want to grow your business. You want to be that small guy that wants to get out there and grow. It's impossible. Every single attribute of the supply chain is working against you. As a result, there's actually a lot of people that are unfinanced, unbanked. We talk about the traditional unbanked, the people in countries that are not as fortunate as ours. There's a lot of people in our own country that are unbanked. But we forget our primary industries. There's a lot of people in our own country as farming families that do not have access to that financial capital to grow their businesses. How can we do that? 
Well, there's a huge problem there because our banking systems and our financial systems and our financing platforms and services just don't support that. The current way that we actually do credit assessments for, fi uh, for farmers and people in the supply chain for agri uh, agriculture is traditionally based. It's all based off what you own, mortgages. So there isn't something that's flexible enough to understand and meet the supply that um, our, cu our current farming population require. From a risk management perspective, there's no way a bank is going to give or a financial service provider is going to give any access to capital if they don't have the real data to understand that. You know, it's, it's been wonderful to see a huge plethora of apps and services come through this uh, new open banking service platforms that we have. And as individuals, instant access to loans. What about families that run a farm? They, they don't have that instant access to loans. And then from a, tr from a transactional perspective, finance is always looked at from a, how much have you made? How much you sold? It's all historical. It's not event-based. And what I mean by event-based is moving, moving between the supply chain. A farmer harvests every single year, seasonally, holds their grain. That grain is now an asset, but it's just sitting there. So that event is not being captured. We believe at AgriDigital that the closest, those closest to the source, i.e. the people working in the farming industry, those moving the grain across, those packaging it up, putting it on logistics, sending it across the world, putting it into retail, getting it into your, onto your plate, are the best people to finance it because we know where it's going. What we're trying to do is build, well not trying, actually we've built it, um, what we've built is a platform that sees the commodity asset from the moment it's sewn into the ground all the way to your plate. And that has a huge, huge uh, benefit to everyone in that supply chain. As a result, we know everything about the supply chain customer. We know how much they sow, we know how much they produce, we know how much they move, we know how much it's being traded for, we work with the buyers, we work with the operators, we work with storage providers. We know everything. We know it at the individual level and we know it also at the global level. Because we also know where everything is being moved and how it's being stored, that event-based actions is what we're now keeping track of. And that's very important for us because the value of a commodity then changes. When you aggregate all that data and then pl uh, put it on top of financial data, other market data, brokerage data, we now apply extra risk, risk that traditional banks can't. So what are we financing? Well, these are, these are the sort of events that we can finance. Post-harvesting finance, i.e. a farmer has just done a huge harvest, loaded in hundreds, hundreds and thousands of tons worth of wheat or cotton or barley, we can then finance the buyer. If the buyer wants to actually get a forward access to capital, we can do that. We can finance a trade. These are the events that we can now move and track. So if you look at the supply chain all the way from farmers all the way down to consumers, every single one of those events can be tracked and every single one of those events can actually be financed. Why? So we can help every single participant in that, in that agricultural supply chain grow fast and get access to capital instantly. So what we're regularly doing is moving away from the traditional bank model. We don't care about your mortgages. We don't care about your individual assets because we see the asset you have, the commodity. Not one of you guys would probably dispute the fact that a 100 tonnes of grain valued at $2 million is not an asset. Of course it is. We just heard about Bitcoin and crypto. It's an asset. You have gold, it's an asset. You have warehousing where people have furnitures. That's an asset. Yet banks and traditional financiers don't see farmers in the same way or see anyone in the supply chain in the same way. Yet we do. So what we've done is actually we've built what we know is the world's first universal inventory data platform. 
where we can see and track inventory from its most primary state all the way down to the producer state. And as a result, we then apply all the financial data, we apply metrics around the global data that we have, and we make it easy for anybody in that, in that ecosystem to then access capital when they need to, to grow their businesses. So how have we done this? Well, there's four major elements to our platform, and it's an amazing platform. By the way, for context, I'm not a farmer. I'm a financial technology guy, and technology is what I love and breathe, and this is what I, this is what I love seeing here. So first, we built a traditional cloud-based mobile platform. Pretty stock standard. This is the entry point. Anyone in the supply chain can come to our platform, and we've got several products and services, and use it straight away, <laughs> capture the data accurately once, and remove the whole paper-based approach. Simple value add, very, very simple value add. For us, this is the way that we are now empowering everyone in the supply chain. We're now connecting everyone in the supply chain and making it easy for everyone to see where the asset is and how much it is. We bring in data from all sorts of data sources, and we make it easy for everyone to actually access that. That's pretty stock standard. This is a zero. This is the standard sort of stuff you would want to see. But for farming technology and agriculture, this is light years. I, and I'm, I'm telling you, like, there's people still in New South Wales or country Victoria or in the United States and Canada that still use and trust a piece of paper. So the fact that we've now got something connected where they can use it offline anywhere is now a huge step forward for them. I know people will talk about blockchain from a uh, why do we use blockchain perspective. It's not a gimmick. We use this primarily to understand true provenance and ownership of that asset. And that's very important because we need to make sure that we understand who actually owns it. Um, and is there any way for anyone to fake it? Uh, so we work with a blockchain provider which is called Jura that manages the transaction and inventory data um, from a transparency perspective. So that happens in real time. Um, and we, we can actually see it happening right now in our platform um, across tea tree oil services, um, across plantation services in Queensland, um, and there's a couple clients in the United States that use it as well. We have a massive IoT sensor, department, area, whatever you want to call it. But the idea is that real-time access to information. So if you think about your traditional bank or your individual loan, you're going out there and grabbing and connecting your open banking data instantly and the banks are seeing that and making an assessment. They know how much you're making, they know how much your income is, they know what you're spending on, they're like, yep, cool. You, we, we made an assessment on you, now you can get access to capital. Well, this is our version of that. So we built integrations and we work with third-party partners to actually know exactly where the grain is or the asset is literally at any point in the stage. And not just know where it is. We can see it. We can measure the quality. We can measure the differences. We can measure the weight. We can measure the uh, visibility. We can ch literally check everything. And that's happening in real time and instantly. So automatically, from a farmer or a producer's perspective or a, lo or a logisti logistician's perspective, they're not worrying about, is this the truck? Does this have the right stuff? Is this a silo that has this? Banks are no longer having to worry about physically going out to the farm or physically going out to a storage facility or going out to a warehouse and saying, does that thing actually exist in there? Because we can see it and we can know it's right there. So some, we've got some really awesome proprietary technology that connects all these things together. And finally, we have integrations. And this is, again, a pretty typical stock standard sort of approach. You, you would expect to see this in a, in a, in a cloud-based platform because the value of our data, our inventory data, is now being utilized by anyone on the supply chain to act, access and add value-added services. Accountants, payment managers, farm management software, um, logist logistics services. We've got a few customers out in Perth and in, in um, 
and in Adelaide who are using our software and the data that's underpinning it all to instantly know when to put something onto a boat to get it ready for shipment. People out in Fletcher's, for example, they're, they're is it one of the, Australia's largest um, site operators and storage facilities. They use our software to get that 1% increase because that 1% increase gets them $1.5 million extra revenue. So we like to say, we, don't, we, haven't, we haven't just made an improvement to the supply chain. We've, what we think, we've, we've created an agricultural supply web. It's the first time we know and we can find that a true connected end-to-end -end supply web has been created. Every single participant on this supply chain, supply web, sorry, can now get access to information when they need it, how they need it, to do exactly what they need with it. It's the first time ever that we've been able to see the efficiencies that we've seen in one of the oldest industries in the world. So what are we doing from a financing perspective? Well, how does this work then? So we started our first financing operations back in 2018 and we were able to finance cotton successfully. We did that in, in, in record time and we've been able to go through every single type of grain operation on our platform and finance it. What we're now moving into is something called on-farm financing and that's a very distinctive aspect. So I want to show you this. This is Fletcher's. So these guys are based out in Dubbo. And what you're seeing there is an aerial view of huge silo storages and massive bunkers. Those bunkers are full and they're about 100 meters long. And they're about 15 meters wide. They're full of wheat or grain or barley. So this is where a traditional bank would go and expect a customer to save their harvest every single year. There's a problem. This is the 4% that I was talking to you about. Now, I'm not trying to say Fletcher's is bad. They're doing a very good job. But for the small independent farmer or the small producer that wants to have a way to just own their own asset and not have to pay for storage facilities, what do you do for them? Well, they want ownership. So this is a farm out in Canoundra in New South Wales, country New South Wales. Um, I don't know the exact farm name, but I know it's one of our customers. Uh, so these are on-farm silo storages. Now, in Australia, we don't have many farms like this, but there's a huge trend to move to this. So if you think about the concept of even Bitcoin, you're moving away from having it stored at a bank to you wanting ownership. You want that, you want that satisfaction to say, this is mine, and I want to tell me how I want to store it, how I want to manage it. Well, it's the same thing for a farmer. They want to be able to say, this is my asset. I get to own it. I get to manage it. I get to do what I want with it. In the United States, however, this is the number one way farmers store their grain or their asset. So it's a huge, huge industry. But, there's a huge but here. Traditional finance won't touch this. So if you're a farmer and now you're, every year you're harvesting nearly 10, 20 million dollars worth of crop asset, yet a bank doesn't want to touch you, what do you do? Well, that's where AgriDigital comes into play. So we, through our technology, can provide on-farm storage finance to anybody right now in Australia, and we're just about to launch the financing capabilities in the North America market. What does that mean, though? Well, it means that all of a sudden, customers and farmers and producers now have access to capital that they never had access to before. This is the fintech revolution for the farming and agriculture sector. So we're now unlocking this huge value of stored inventory that banks and traditional financiers never touched because they couldn't. They couldn't see it. They couldn't see the data. They didn't have that relationship, that intimate relationship with the customer either. So this is what we've been actually working on. And, and this is very important because all of a sudden, we're helping that 96% of farming industry 
get access to grow and become a very powerful independent sector. So some of our current metrics. So we can approve finance loans in currently 5.5 minutes through our platform. And that's a variety of things. We go through and instantly look at all your deliveries, we look at the inventory, we look at the quality, we look at where it is, we look at who the ownership is. And instantaneously, a person can literally press, give me finance, and it'll give them essentially a credit score looking approach. And our average ticket size has already been about $110,000 in loan value. It's pretty amazing. So in 5.5 minutes, you get approved for a loan. In 24 hours, you get that into your bank account. Now, I'm going to compare that to the current metric for banks. And I like to smile about this because, <laughs> because at the end of the day, banks are the ones that are losing out here. Six months is a traditional time to turn around for a farm to go to a bank and request access to finance. Six months. That's life or death for most farmers. Most farmers would be like, I can't afford to do that. How do I feed my family? How do I grow this business? Six months is too long. So if there's anyone from like top banks here, and including those that are traditionally agricultural banks, still six months is too long. 24 hours, I think that's a bit, much, a bit more better. Technically, we always work. Here's the good part, the risk management. Zero bad debt, zero. Why? Because we can see where that asset is. We have that relationship with the customer from start all the way to end. We provide a service that is so far beyond what is currently available that every single customer today wants to pay it back because they can. They now have a business to pay it back with. So let's look at some of the bigger numbers. So on our platform to date, we're about five years old. We process $5 billion worth of grain asset, moving in and out. 35 million tons of grain um, across our commodity volumes. Impressively, we've done $50 million worth of loans just since 2018 as well, and we're about to go and quadruple that. Uh, and we have about 7,500 active users across all of our technology platforms. So we're going big and we're going global because there's a huge opportunity here that we see that clearly the banks and traditional finance is just completely missing out on. So that's what I wanted to share, to share with you about. I wanted to keep it brief because I really wanted to see if there's a lot of questions available. Um, and it can be anything about the technology, it can be anything about how we operate, um, our team, and what we do. Looks like if anyone has questions, we've got a mic going around. Oh, oh. Hi, Philip Bateman, Bravo Charlie. What's the time to roll out sensors on a farm if I want to get finance? Yeah, we provide a package that gets up to you within 48 hours, and then it has a self-installation kit. And so three days I could have finance? Yep. Cool. Thanks. Hey, mate. Thanks for the presentation. Hayden from NAB Ventures, so Australia's largest ag agribank. <laughs> Thank you very much, NAB Bank. <laughs> um, I'm a believer in the technology and the opportunity here. I guess my question is... You said it in your presentation where, I don't think it's controversial to say that farmers aren't probably an early adopter of technology. So the fact that you have 7,500 users on your platform already, but there's obviously a lot of paper-based transactions within the supply chain. What is actually your go-to-market and, and how are you actually kind of adopting these users and getting them onto your platform? Very good question. Um, yep, you are correct. Farming is very traditionally anti-technology. Um, I met with a customer the other day that was like, I don't need your technology. Everything's right up here. I'm like, okay, but how do you know the prices and how do you know you're going to sell it to? Um, so what we've really focused in on is going for our digital natives. Um, we've got a huge digital campaign uh, that we work with and we've found all the digital natives, not just here in Australia, but also in the United States. Um, a lot of those customers um, are usually third or fourth generation farming. 
usually kids that are from farming families that are now living in Sydney or, or Melbourne in the cities, um, but they still want to have a connection to their farming parents somehow. With our technology, they can. And there's actually three employees in our team that actually have a family that live in country New South Wales. And they're living in Sydney and they are literally managing their farm using our software. Um, on the bus, in our office, in the park, and those are the people that we know are gonna be the ones adopting, and we've seen that. So we've purposely not gone for the traditionalist because that's difficult to convince. But the child, they're the ones using technology today, and they're the ones that are gonna be wanting to use technology tomorrow. So that's who we've targeted. Okay. Thanks. One more quick question, and then we'll, we'll go to the next session. Hey, uh, that was a really interesting talk. I appreciated that. The I don't know who's talking, sorry. A bit. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just, I'm just curious. So, is there a period of time that the farmer has to purchase a license to your logistic platform before you collect enough data to be comfortable to provide the rate that you provide, or do you have to do you provide an initial benchmark rate? And yeah, good, change? good question. Um, so, technically, yes. In f three days, you could technically have access to finance, um, but to make it clean and easy for us to actually assess. Um, it takes a few weeks. And that's because we want to see how you're moving that inventory from your farm all the way down to wherever you're selling it to. So we do like to see some trend analysis about that, and it takes about two or three weeks, depending on the season. Out of season, it, it can actually take a, quite a little bit of time. So right now, for example, out of harvest season, not going to take two or three weeks. Uh, not many buyers are out there right now. So it's going to take around maybe a month or two. Great, I think that's all we have time for for this session. Thank you Cheers, so thank you much, much. Jins. It, it's <laughs> great to see how Agri-Digital is supporting